It's time for Cannabis Common Sense, the show that tells you the truth about marijuana and the politics behind its prohibition. And now here's the host of the show, Paul Stanford. Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Cannabis Common Sense. Uh, you may know that our program is a production of our political committee, Campaign for the Restoration and Regulation of Hemp. Our political committee is circulating a petition, the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act, and a referendum to recall the legislature's bill to recriminalize marijuana. On today's show, we have my lovely wife, Teresa Stanford, and Donna McPherson, treasurer of Portland Normal. Welcome, Hi, ladies. Hi, Paul. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Donna. Yes, Paul. Uh, right now, we've been circulating the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act on a volunteer basis till just the past week when we've finally been able to start paying petitioners. We're also starting to circulate a referendum petition. Here we have the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act. It's a petition to tax and regulate the sales of marijuana to adults in state liquor stores, license farmers to grow the drug for sales to the OLCC. It will let the OLCC put it in pharmacies at cost and then in the state liquor stores and bars and smoking establishments that bar the entrance of those under 21. Uh, it will also allow farmers without a license to cultivate industrial hemp to make paper, fabric, protein, and oil. And we've just begun circulating the referendum to recall House Bill 3643. This w bill was passed by the legislature to recriminalize simple possession of under an ounce of marijuana. And we're fighting hard to help get these things on the ballot. If we get the referendum on the ballot, we want you to vote no on that. When we get the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act on the ballot, we want you to vote yes on that. Uh, you can give us a call. In fact, we need you to give us a call so that we can get these petitions into your hands. Uh, give us a call at 235-4606. If you're outside the Portland area, then it's 1-503-235-4606. You can also get our petitions through the internet. In fact, you can watch this TV program through the internet now through our webpage. And the webpage address is www dot c r r h dot o r g and right at that page you'll find a link where you'll be able to download and print our petitions on your home printer if you've got a waterproof inkjet printer or a laser printer we urge you to print the petitions right from there yes um, we'd like to go into some of the usefulness of cannabis you know we uh, been looking at some of our past shows and thought that we were having too many men on. It was just talking guys. And we thought that we needed to try to encourage the women out there. There's to females working too hard for this cause. That's right. That's right. And we yeah. need to let you know that uh, this is a diverse uh, movement that we're forming here. Isn't that right? Yeah, it takes everybody putting in um, what they think is their talent. Um, like when I first started um, doing the activist work, um, I thought, well, what do I want to do? Um, I was fortunate enough to, um, at first, start making hemp seed cookies. It's actually the kind that's legal. It's actually used for bird seed, but it's got such a good nutty taste that I actually made these really good, um, like raisin, chocolate chip, and hemp seed cookies. Well, one time we're at an event where I was selling these like a bake sale, but it was actually a part of another thing, like musical um, and activities. There was, it was at the Mount Tabor pub, actually. Um, what happened was, I was in the bathroom, and a lady said to me, um, wow, did you taste those hemp seed cookies? And I said, yeah, in fact, I made them. So I knew that they turned out really well. <laughs> And Donna here is also a really good cook. Um, we you. do more than cook, but we are putting our talents into place. Um, she baked for our New Year's Eve benefit some really good, like chocolate. Um, would you like things. to go what into <laughs> what you made? Uh, Little cheesecakes. <sighs> mm. so Everyone can appreciate. Yeah, they were great. I thought. Yeah, so the best I've ever tasted. So, actually, I've been spending most of my time lately 
working on the referendum because we're so short of time. That's the present, yeah. yes. That we was the past have, and the cookies. <laughs> we, on, we only have until October yeah. 3rd to get 48,000, is it, good signatures? 48,000 good signatures because we need 48,000. We'll really need to turn in 60 or 65,000 mm -hmm. to make right. certain we've got enough valid signatures. So that's what I've been spending most of my time on lately. I've discovered that not only can you gather signatures at our usual place, Saturday Market, right. uh, I've done it on the bus. There's uh, people out there who need to sign this because this is not just a matter of legalization. Mm -hmm. The referendum is to keep Oregon from going backwards in time. To th for, to so things would be worse. It would be more illegal than it is now. Yeah, it's a regressive bill. It does uh, uh, require the, the bill that the legislature passed that we're trying to force a vote on and hopefully we'll get the state to, to vote against. Uh, that will require the suspension of driver's licenses for six months. If you're caught with marijuana, it could be anywhere. It could be in your home, it could be wherever, at a concert, your driver's license will be suspended for six months. And it requires the mandatory diversion program. So you'll have to go in for your analysis, a drug counseling, uh, they'll uh, probably make you enter a program, all at your own expense that probably will cost $2,000. You can't get your driver's license back until you've done that. So that's one aspect. Another aspect of the recriminalization is that it allows the police to expand the powers of search and seizure. In fact, they s said that was the main reason they wanted this, was as a tool to law enforcement to expand the powers of search and seizure. So they could come in and seize your home, your car, your children, uh, and put you in, in the uh, grips of uh, the ever-growing police state, actually. And so we're circulating our petitions. And we urge you to call us at 235-4606. That's 235-4606 so that yeah. we can send these to you. We really do need your help. This is the only way to stop the madness that's going on. We're talking about one of the most beneficial, useful plants on the planet. Um, I've also worked with um, hemp paper. That's been my passion. Um, I worked with a company that sold tree-free um, paper. and. It prospered for a long time, but now I realize our goal will only be met if we can decentralize hemp and grow it here in our fields, here in Oregon. That'll lower the cost, that's for certain. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. Paper's very heavy, you ship it around the world, you've got a lot of shipping costs. So, right. uh, we have beautiful forests here in Oregon, and I can understand why you would want to cut down trees for timber, for, for use in construction, but why, when you have a, when you can use hemp, why would anybody want to cut down a tree just to make paper? Hemp paper is much better anyway. Yeah, it's true. Paper mm -hmm. was invented from hemp. Uh, and so uh, we actually want to go back to the traditional production of uh, paper. And uh, we're hoping to do that by allowing industrial hemp in the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act. Yeah. You know, how else do you think the marijuana prohibition specifically impacts women and how else do you think uh, uh, this issue is really important? Well I think that a lot of women there probably are as many women that use marijuana as there are men. Mm -hmm. You never know that from going to normal meetings or from seeing this show until now but women have got to come forward. For one thing, there are some specifically useful things for women. Uh, I th it's good for cramps. It's good for PMS. It makes yes. you feel so much, feel a lot better. Uh, I'm um, going into menopause myself, and I've found that it's been very useful for some of the symptoms of menopause, like hot flashes, mm -hmm. and um, right, hot it's flashes. It's all those things that affect women worldwide. <laughs> Yeah, in fact, marijuana was uh, prescribed to Queen Victoria for uh, menstrual cramps and, and things like that. And Queen. if you look in the pharmacopias uh, up until uh, the middle of this century, marijuana was prescribed for many different uh, ailments during childbirth, morning sickness, uh, cramps, uh, 
Specifically, it had a lot of usefulness with with uh, depression. Women that in was particular. the other thing I was trying to think of, particularly, is that uh -huh. a lot of menopausal women get depressed easily, and I think yes. that it's very good for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Plus, I believe it's a stress reliever. Um, actually, stress is the number one killer in America today. So, That's right. which do you choose? <laughs> um, so you know, yeah. we're trying put this issue on the ballot. Right. And I, I interrupt and say it so often, but I'll do it one more time because if somebody's out there channel surfing across their cable channel and are watching this, yeah. we need to stress the fact that we want you to call us. You know, we have our two petitions. We're circulating the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act and the referendum to stop the recriminalization of marijuana in Oregon. So we want to send those to you. We also have a newspaper we put out that is reprints of major articles dealing with this issue from around the country and around the world. It's called Hemp News and you can find that on the internet too. You can even download the petitions on the internet so uh, you might want to look at uh, the website and uh, pull the petition right from there at www.crrh.org. That's, that's one useful thing. So, yes, how can we get more women involved in this movement so well, that we can... Um, I believe everyone has a talent. Um, what I chose also to do, besides making cookies, was to get into fundraising. Um, we held a benefit at uh, the Temple um, 420, and I and a few others, um, we started off a small group, four or five people, and then we grew. Um, we had a great time. We had Trillion Green come, um, Other Living Things, um, the last debut of Ground Score. And I just think it's, you know, it's exciting. There's so many different aspects that you can help. Um, yeah. And what you need to do is, of course, contact us and tell us what you want to do. Um, petitioning, obviously, is the most important thing. I do enjoy doing that also um, because you get to interact with people um, for a common cause. And I have, you know, had a lot of fun, basically, just getting to know the activists. Um, and I hope everyone out there that hears this message realizes that you, too, can do something to help um, the state of Oregon, because this would also help bring in so much money for tax revenue. You know, originally we wanted to fund schools with it, but um, this time we're just basically needing it to be open for pharmaceutical purposes, for, you know, for doctors to prescribe it, farmers, and of course, so we can grow it for paper and all the other industrial uses. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we urge you to give us a call once again. The phone yeah. number is 235-4606. Let us send the petitions out to you and uh, uh, get involved. You know, the, Teresa mm -hmm. was talking about uh, helping with uh, fundraising or events and petitioning. We also have uh, office work that needs to be done, newspaper deliveries. Uh, there's just tons of different ways that uh, uh, you could get active if you wanted to. But the first step is to call us at 235-4606. Let us send you the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act petition. Let us send you the referendum. We have to get 50,000 good signatures by early October to stop the recriminalization of marijuana from going into effect. I might want to mention that while you're petitioning, you can also register voters. I always ask, what's the first thing I say to people when I walk up to them, are you a registered Oregon voter? If they don't, uh, if they say that they're not registered Oregon voters, I say, would you like to, be, to register now? We always carry registration forms, and we delight in registering people who aren't so have, who haven't been right. active in politics as of yet. Right, and if you've um, just moved to Oregon and you want to become a registered voter here, all you have to do is be here for 24 hours. Yeah, if you have an address to move to, that's all you have to do. You just have to have a residence. It's not like a uh, residence for college tuition purposes. It's as soon as you've moved here, you can register to vote. And you can vote in the first, if you've been here within 20 days, you can vote in the elections, but you can register 
right away. There's no reason to delay that. And also, if you want to go out and circulate our petition, it's a fun way for you to earn money. We are uh, circulating these two petitions. We're paying per signature. If you can get 15 people an hour, let me tell you that that is a slow average. You can get 15 people an hour to sign the petition just about anywhere you go out in public if you try. And that way, a person is earning $10 an hour. Now, if you're in a good location where there are a lot of people, you can actually get 30 people to sign the petition an hour. And in that case, you're earning $20 an hour. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a good way to go out and earn money and help make a political change. And that's what we're doing with mm -hmm. these two petitions. Right. Uh, if mm -hmm. you can get out there and help us circulate it uh, and you need to earn money and earn a living, please do because we currently are paying on both petitions. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't want you to do it if you want to be a volunteer. We want you to do it regardless of we what you do. We want everybody to do it. And I, yeah. yeah. A lot we of need everybody do to, to do it. Yeah. I've discovered a lot of people out there will sign it. There's seldom anyone who doesn't. A lot of people even comment, well, I don't even smoke it. But I just right. think that it should be available, especially to the medically ill, and just on a general freedom basis. Yeah, um, a lot of people say yeah. that uh, the issue isn't drugs at all, it's really freedom. And that's why we're out here uh, working so hard at that. You know, I'm a volunteer personally, as is Teresa and Donna, but that doesn't mean that we discourage anyone from going out there and earning money. We've all got bills to pay, and if you want to go and earn money in a good way, circulating our petitions is one way to do it now. You know, our campaign has been a totally volunteer one up until now. It's been completely volunteer uh, until just the past month in mid-July when uh, some folks came forward and pledged some money so that we can begin paying petitioners. But now that we can, we urge everyone that needs work to give us a call at 235-4606. Get our petitions. We're, we've got a newspaper out there that we give out as well. If you're petitioning, uh, it's a good thing to uh, get people uh, that keeps them informed on all the breakthroughs that are happening. It's called Hemp News. It's also available, as I think I said earlier, on our webpage at www.crrh.org. But it's just important that you get involved, whether you want to get paid or you want to do it on a volunteer basis. It's up to you, but call us and contact us. That's important, isn't it? Yes. Oh, it's vital. I think especially, I know a lot of medical users uh, through the Alternative Health Center and these are people that basically are either going through chemotherapy, they have AIDS, or they have some disease like multiple sclerosis that causes spasms. Some of these people cannot eat because of the effects of some of the medication they're taking unless they smoke marijuana. They're wasting away. And this right. is one of the specific things that's particularly good for the wasting syndrome. And I've mm -hmm. known other people with problems with spasms or phantom pain, marijuana is one of the best things for that. Yes. And there's no exemption. I wanted you to, to make sure you know in the recriminalization bill does not exempt medical users. So what, what will happen is that people who are in pain, people who are in wheelchairs will go to jail. This isn't right. No, it isn't. It's wrong. You know, hemp, uh, is useful as a medicine for many different people and to torture those people by bringing them into the criminal justice system and persecuting them. This, this is wrong and that's why we're out here working hard to try to stop that. You know, In the legislature, uh, one legislator introduced a bill to amend this to uh, uh, include medical marijuana as mm -hmm. an exemption from the recriminalization of marijuana. That was and Representative Amy, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Representative Amy mm -hmm. from here in Southeast Portland, and in my neighborhood, in fact. And he uh, uh, tried to amend the bill to include an exemption for people with medical need. Mm -hmm. And the opposition said, well, you know, that's a separate issue. We need to debate medical marijuana if you want to. And so actually they stopped the debate by saying that we have to debate it on medical marijuana, but then they never let the bill on medical marijuana get a hearing. Yes. So there was no way to ever have the debate. In fact, in one of the committee hearings, uh, uh, Representative Minnis of uh, Wood Village here in the Portland area promised Representative Amy as a way to stop the debate 
on amending the bill to include a medical exemption, Menace, a Portland police detective sergeant, promised Amy that he would allow the medical marijuana bill to have a hearing in the Judiciary Committee in the House. But then Representative Menace lied and he never allowed that bill to come up for a hearing. He just used that as a ploy to stop the debate. So uh, he it, obviously doesn't care what happens to these medical users at all. That's no, he's terrible. a police officer and he wanted to expand his power and to help his cronies in the police department. And that was the sole reason for this bill. Mm -hmm. they, the governor said as he signed it, it has less to do with the possession of marijuana as it does with expanding the police powers of search and seizure. Yeah. So uh, that's the real reason they're doing this. And uh, we need to send them a message that that isn't going to be uh, tolerated, that we Oregon voters aren't going to let that happen. And you can do that by getting this petition and signing it. If you're out in public and you see someone who is petitioning, go up to them. Get them to sign the petition. If you're out there uh, looking for work or you know someone who's looking for work, urge them to call us. We need to get this petition out there and we need to do it today. The number is 235-4606. I bet some of you have that number memorized by now. <laughs> but if you don't, it's 235-4606. Yeah. We need your help to be able to put this on the ballot and get this issue before the voters and stop the recriminalization of marijuana. Yes, and I was going to say it is really simple to do this. Um, what you need to do is sign at the bottom. It is your petition. Um, and then you make sure you have the right county in. And oh, good, good point, Theresa. Yeah, yeah, and what you want to do is ask, like Donna said, are you registered to vote in Oregon? And they'll answer you. And according to their answer, you have them sign the right county. And that's all you really got to do is make sure they're doing it right. So the Secretary of State will be happy. And that's basically it. And you get to have a little chit chat. Um, a lot of people do realize the benefits and are proud to sign this. And I'm even many people who don't use marijuana themselves know others that do use it medicinally mm -hmm. or recreationally and don't believe that those people should go to jail. That's what strikes me. It gives me really a lot of hope to know that people realize that, sure, they may not want to take it. You know, I may not want to take aspirin, but. You know, I think it should be available. So. Yeah, you know, here in the Portland area, in gathering signatures, you often have to have three different counties as the primary counties. Mm -hmm. You've got Multnomah, Clackamas, and Washington counties, the tri-county area. But outside of this area, if you're in Corvallis, you've got Lynn and Benton County because the, the boundary of the county is right there on the Willamette River. If you're down in Eugene, Lane County is where you're going to get most of your signatures. But the real key is that on the petitions, there's a little box in the upper corner mm -hmm. that you need to, that's blank, it says county. And you write the name of the county, that, and then everyone who signs that sheet needs to be registered in that county. Mm -hmm. So that, and they have to be registered to vote in that county, or else their signature doesn't really count. Right. And we have to get another one to make up for it. Then, when you've got your signatures, you need to make sure you fill in this box on the bottom. It's the circulator statement saying that you circulated this petition and that you believe the people who signed it are registered voters. You need to put your address in there. And so that is the, the easy way to do it, basically. Yeah, and I've noticed a lot of people, they come up and they're really excited about signing. So their eagerness, they just start writing their name down anywhere. So that's why it's really good just to be careful what county they're in. Yeah, you have so. to make certain they sign the right uh, county sheet. Also, if you're registering mm -hmm. voters, they can't sign at the same time that they register. It takes time to process their registration. And they have to, I base, usually when I'm at Saturday Market, when I register voters, I tell them that when their card comes in the mail, come in and sign then. Now with, with people who want to petition, uh, lately we've been paying people to petition and what I do is I have people go down to the county elections office and actually that's just a little over a mile away from our office in southeast Portland. And you can go right into the county elections office in your county. Here in Portland it's at southeast 11th and Morrison. But in other cities, uh, it's uh, usually wherever the county government's 
based out of. You go into the elections office and they will stamp your voter registration card and give you a certificate right there showing that uh, you are registered to vote from that time forward. Then, as soon as it gets into your county elections office, you can start circulating the petition, you can sign the petition, you can get active on a basis that uh, uh, is useful for uh, our political movement. Yeah. So, once again, that phone number is 235-4606. That's 235-4606. If you're outside of the Portland area, add 1503 to the front of 235-4606. And we're real happy to send out the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act petition to you. You know, uh, there was an article in the, uh, the Lancet, which came out in December of 1995, called uh, The War on Drugs and Decriminalizing Cannabis. Mm -hmm. That article, the very first sentence of that article said, quote, the smoking of cannabis, even long term, is not harmful to health. Yeah, that's one End of my favorite quote. quotes now. <laughs> that's, this is a peer-reviewed medical journal, one of the most widely respected medical journals in the world. It's been coming out for 200 years now. It's one of the oldest medical journals in the world and the oldest one in the English language. And the first sentence of this article, an editorial by their head editor, was the smoking of cannabis, even long term, is not harmful to health, end quote. That article ended with another quote that I, I just love. It goes, quote, uh, sooner or later, politicians are going to have to stop running scared and address the evidence. Cannabis, per se, is not harmful to health, but driving it further underground may well be, end quote. Here in Oregon, our legislature has taken a move to drive cannabis further underground, and we have a response. We have the power of referendum. We want not to like get some signatures. Mm -hmm. That's right. Right. We have the power of referendum, and we need to get 50,000 registered Oregon voter signatures to put this on the ballot, and we need you to vote no on it. Same time, we need 75,000 registered Oregon voters to put the regulation and taxation of cannabis and legal medical cannabis and legal industrial hemp on the ballot. We can do that, but we need your help. Once again, call us, 235-4606. We're pretty much wrapping up, ladies. Is there anything else you'd like to say to folks uh, in our closing minutes here? Yes. Um being active, you know, being an activist really has some really good um, adventures and it's exciting. It's the best way to meet people I know of. Well, yeah, it's, I've actually met some friends through this and it's, it's beneficial, you know, not only for oneself but for everybody and I think it's just ideal that if you're stressed out about something like you're afraid the police are going to kick in your door or something then it's better to do something about it. Um, right. Not just sit back and watch TV and become a part of the norm. Um, you can if you want to, but th it's all about this should be a free country. So, yeah. you know, we want to thank you folks for watching. We urge you to call us one last time. If you haven't memorized it yet, 235-4606. <laughs> thank you for watching. It's been another exciting edition of Cannabis Common Sense, uh, the program that tells you the truth about marijuana, and we urge you to tune in next week. Good night, folks. Thank you.